Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. The Chapitram Samadishtam Pradhasarga. Sarge Vrita Vataha Narayana Saro Jagmur Yatra Siddha Svapur Vajaha. Translation, in accordance with their father's order to beget children, the second group of sons also went to Narayan Saras, the same place where their brothers had previously attained perfection by following the instructions of Narada. Undertaking great vows of austerities, the Salvalas, 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 they at the holy place. <laughs> So Japani Daksha sent his group of sons to the same place where his previous sons had attained perfection. He did not hesitate to send his group to the same place, although they too might become victims of Narada's instruction. According to Vedic culture, one should be trained in spiritual understanding as a brahmachari before entering life to beget children. This is the Vedic system. Thus, Prajapati Daksha sent his second group of sons for cultural improvement, despite the risk that because of the instructions of Narada, they might become as intelligent as their older brothers. As a dutiful father, he did not hesitate to allow his sons to receive cultural instructions concerning the perfection of life. He depended on, upon them to choose whether to return home back to Godhead or to rot in this material world of various species of life. In all circumstances, the duty of the father is to give culture education to his sons. They must later decide which way to go. Responsible fathers should not hinder their sons when making culture advancement in association with the Krishna conscious movement. This is not a father's duty. The duty of a father is to give, complete, give his son complete freedom to make his choice after becoming spiritually advanced by following the instructions of the spiritual master. Inanjana Salakaya Chaksun Namitam Yena Tasmai Shri Gadavena Maha Uma Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Nityanamana Namaste Saraswati Deve Gaur Vani Pachari Vanyavi Sai Sasun Yavadi Vasyatya Dei Sitarine Vanshakalpa Tarudhisya Pipa Sindhu Bay, Bacha Patitan and Pavane Bio, Vaishnavi Bio Namahum Jai Sri Krishna, Chaitanya Prabhu Nityamanda, Sri Advaita Gadada Rasivasari Gor, Dr. Vindu, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Hare. <laughs> So if you'll just give me about 30 seconds, I'll return. So if we take the last line in the purport, which is very significant, you can go to that last line. Right there is good. 
Um, it's the duty of a father to give his son complete freedom to make his choice after becoming as spiritually advanced by following the instructions of the spiritual master. So there's a sequence there. And Prabhupada refers to it earlier. Before one enters household life, training is required, particularly for the man. Not so much from the woman. The woman will get training from her mother on how to uh, serve her husband nicely and become a responsible wife and mother. But the, father, the, uh, the man needs to have some basis in spiritual education. And therefore, as Prabhupada says in the very beginning, one should be trained in spiritual understanding in the celebrate ashram, brahmachari life, before entering household life to beget children. Nowadays, people just jump into some kind of relationship and they call it married life. They have no understanding of the responsibility. They accept responsibility out of, out of four circumstances. Or um, many of the times they don't take on the proper responsibility. And that means how to manage a family in, in such a way that both husband and wife make progress in spiritual life and all of the requirements of family uh, duties are taken care of nicely. So that requires some training. And training in brahmachari helps to develop this sense of detachment. Because if one goes into household life simply to enjoy um, the uh, pleasure of the opposite sex, and then it's no better than animal life. Because that's what the animals do. A uh, human form of life is to come together as husband and wife to produce Krishna conscious children and to assist each other in going back home, back to Godhead and fulfilling one's emotional and uh, basic needs, may basic material needs. But of course, the most important thing, it has to have a spiritual foundation. And therefore, if the, the young man is trained nicely in brahmacharya life, he will be a good father and a good husband. Uh, otherwise, uh, a lot of times the young men without that training, they don't really want to take on the responsibilities. They come out of an irresponsible life into a very responsible life and they're not, re they're not ready for it, either in mind or in the arrangements that they have in their life. So therefore, it's important that that spiritual understanding is there. And Prabhupada emphasizes by saying, um, the father becomes the guide for the children. Of course, nowadays that's being rejected because people don't want to listen to their parents. This is one of the features of Kali Yuga. And this is mentioned in the 12th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, the symptoms of the age of Kali where uh, rejections of uh, authority and parents are all pervading and people don't want to listen to authority. They want to make their own decisions and they want to do what, what they want, when they want, and they think they're competent enough to uh, understand what to do. And most of the time, practically all of the time, they wind up in a very difficult situation. This is because Failing to accept authority, failing to have proper training. So you'll see so many marriages fall apart because of that. But therefore here, Dakshin knows that his previous sons, the, uh, you see there was the Shalvas and then, then there was the Salavas and forgot the name, the, First group. Haryashwas. Mm -hmm. Haryashwas, yeah. He sent them to get training and to prepare for household life, but Narada Muni intercepted them and preached to them to stay brahmachari, and therefore they gave up all of their uh, direction given by their father and never came back home again. For Japanese doctrine knows this. And then he, but he knows that it's important that the children have proper training beforehand. 
So again, he sent him to a holy place for that training. Again, you'll see how Narada will interrupt them. And as the, uh, I don't want to give too much of what's happening up, upcoming, but you'll see how uh, Prajapati Daksha uh, faces Narada and criticizes him for what he's doing. And uh, yeah. But here it says that he, Prabhupada gives him credit for being a responsible father because he understands that training before entering into the Grihastha ashram is fundamental for, uh, for developing the proper attitude and the proper resources. And that, and you'll see, it's um, if you just compare it to the, um, the statistics that we have in the today's world, uh, no one's prepared. People jump in and out of the ashrams. There are divorces all the time. There are unwanted children. There are abortions. And these are even among so-called respectable people. It's not just from low-class low people. It happens on all the way up and down the line. From pious people all the way down, down to people who are impious. Because no one understands what is the goal of life. The goal of life is, as it says here, to go back home, back to God, and not to rot in this material world. You might say, well, rot, what does it mean to rot in the material world? Maya the Rase, Kacho Bese, Kacho Habu Dubai. That means life after life. Karnam Guna Sangha, so Sarasa Joni Janmasu. A living entity who is not the material body, who lives in the material body, who is, a, who is a pure spiritual entity, who has a loving relationship with the Supreme Lord, covered by the material body, thinks that the material world and the satisfaction of the mind, senses, and the intelligence is the goal of life. And therefore, that wrong understanding or that covered intelligence, which is based on ignorance, leads one life after life to different situations in the material world where they take on another birth. So one wants to avoid that. No one wants to suffer. Material life means to suffer. There's no doubt about that. Spiritual life means to free one from suffering and attain ultimate happiness and uh, unlimited transcendental knowledge. But unless we have that proper training, therefore many of us who come to Krishna consciousness didn't have that training or we were trained partially. So you might say, well, you know, I never had that training. Or this is the situation. Yeah. But the training can be done anytime, even during the time when one is in Grihastha. There are educational programs by which one can learn how to execute devotional service in that environment with children, with responsibilities, with husband and wife. And uh, that training is um, the direction that one needs in order to make the decisions that come by way of the challenges living in this material world and the responsibilities of coming to both a position of leadership from the, for the man's part of view, and at the same time, um, the responsibilities of maintaining his family. And, uh, and Prabhupada was astonished to see the climate of the Western countries, how fallen it was. When he was in New York City, he met some nice uh, senior lady, elderly Indian lady, and Prabhupada, they were talking, and she had mentioned she has a, a grown-up son. So Prabhupada said, well, do you have plans to get your grown-up son married? When were you going to get him married? Well, she said, well, yeah, that's very nice if he can support a wife. So uh, Prabhupada was astonished, thinking, it's such a big thing to support a wife. <laughs> and so... And people don't want to get married because of that uh, so-called responsibility. Um, not so-called, it is a responsibility. But uh, this is the climate of, of Kali Yuga. 
uh, without training, there's so many problems and people who see the problems don't want to enter into the same situation. Therefore, they don't even get married or if they just come together as boy and girl and have some relationship and don't even consider any kind of legal ties, marriage or following any, any kind of ecclesiastic or religious principle. But therefore, Krishna consciousness teaches that education, not only in transcendental knowledge about the process of going back home, back to God, but the practical knowledge that is needed in order to execute one's responsibilities in this material world, whatever position one is in, in order to make that as a solid foundation where it does not interfere, but it actually supports our execution of devotional service. So, and you will see that, that people have so many problems on a personal level, why? And then they complain they have no time for Krishna consciousness, or they had so many difficulties in Krishna consciousness because of struggling to maintain their uh, material life whether it's about to begin their material life or during their material life, they're always struggling because they have no clear understanding of how to live and how to manage in these situations. That's why Srila Prabhupada was, um, and of course the Acharyas, the idea of divorce was never a consideration in Vedic culture. There was no such thing as divorce. Even if there was problems between the husband and wife, they would somehow work it out based on religious principles, based on getting proper guidance from seniors. They wouldn't even consider giving up the relationship. They would always think well, we have to do something to somehow or other solve the problems. Um, and that was also true when I was growing up, when I... Uh, was uh, I grew up in the 1950s and even the early 60s and uh, going to school in high school and in grammar school uh, we didn't know anyone in our school whose parents were divorced and the only thing we knew about divorce was that they had a show on television called Divorce Court where they would find these situations and make it a, a show on TV. And that's the only thing we ever knew. And none of my friends, none of my friends, 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 parents ever got divorced. They had, of course, they had disagreements in the family and there were problems, yeah. But divorce became, in the 1980s, it started to really accelerate then now that was an option to solve the so-called difficulties that come by way of relationships. Just give up the relationship. But then in the 1990s, the statistics in the United States of America particularly is that 70% 70 70 of all marriages end divorce in the first three years. And most of the people who do get divorced get married two or three times. So, yeah, um, therefore, Prabhupada would say, you know, marriage is for life because marriage is not about simply enjoying in a particular arena with a husband or wife. It's about making solutions to the problems of life and working together to bring up children and to teach them the goal of life. Krishna consciousness and to become Krishna conscious themselves. Therefore, uh, Rishabde very strongly makes a statement in the fifth canto, fifth chapter of um, Srimad Bhagavatam. Can we turn to that verse? It's 5518 in the Bhagavatam. Guru na sasya, sajano na sasya, piti na sasya, janane na sasya, 
Ivan the Tasyam, the Patis, the Sasyam, the Mocha Yedia, Samapeta Umbetum. One who cannot deliver his dependents from the path of repeated birth and death should never become a spiritual master, a father, a husband, a mother, or a worshipful deity. Srila Prabhupada's purport is quite lengthy. Or we'll read something. There are many spiritual masters, but Rishabdev advises that one should not become a spiritual master. He's unable to save his disciples from the path of birth and death. Okay, go down the page. Here it says, unless one is devoted and can't, let's see here. Unless one is devoted, he cannot give up everything to the, unless one can do so, he cannot become a husband, spiritual master, father, or mother. Similarly, the wives of the Brahmas would prefer, okay. So here he mentioned, everyone should be responsible to take charge of their dependents, just as the spiritual master takes charge of the disciple, or the father takes charge of the son. All these responsibilities, cannot be discharged honestly unless one can save the dependents from repeated birth and death. So here we see not only guru, but teacher, mother, father, uh, should not enter into that responsibility of bringing up children unless they are Krishna conscious and unless they can give Krishna consciousness to their children. Okay, so this is a this is coming from Rishabdev. Rishabdev is an incarnation of the Lord. He's not just another great soul. He's an incarnation of the supreme personality of God, and he's making this statement. Okay, so these are some principles. Now we'll see back to Narada Muni. And Narada Muni. Um, he knows what he's supposed to do as a prajapati, as a responsible father. He has to prepare his, son, his children for their next stage in life. And so he's doing that, sending them to a holy place. Um, he knows what happened to his previous sons. Um, he wasn't so happy about that, but he decided not to change his course of activity because it was a correct course. He didn't expect Narada to jump in and um, divert his children to become brahmacharis. Um, and you'll see um, how Narada does it again. <laughs> and, and on the third, on the third time, he instead of producing sons, he produces girls, or, yeah, ladies. So Narada can't interfere with that one. <laughs> Okay, so, so these are some, uh, some of the responsibilities. Guru has responsibilities to awaken transcendental knowledge and the goal of life in the living entities and the parents have responsibilities to train their children for their next stage in life, whatever that may be, whether it's brahmachari, putting them in the Guru Kula, Grihasta life, to uh, prepare them by educating them accordingly in the duties of Grihastha life, which is an extension of their training in Brahmachari life. If that Brahmachari training is not there, or even for the, la the ladies, as we mentioned earlier, they get their training from their parents, especially their mother, um, then it becomes difficult for the them to execute their responsibilities in a way that they will um, move forward in life. Uh, so most of the problems we have in life is based on ignorance. We just don't know what is the right understanding, how to do things, what to avoid, and what is beneficial. But therefore, the scriptures are there just to teach us and guide us in towards the goal of life, and here, particularly in cultivation of the ashrams, which is the foundation for execution of devotion. So 
when one is nicely situated in their ashram, whether it's brahmacharya, celibate student, grihasta, responsible parent, or uh, on sannyas, traveling mendicant, if they know their duties and execute them accordingly, then the whole society will benefit not only them, but everyone else will also benefit. Okay, thank you very much. We'll stop here. Thank you so, so much, Maharaj. And thank you for reinforcing that in this yoga, we are just sorting out for a quick exit. And it's such so disappointing to see that husband wives are falling apart and kids are facing the problem. Um, I will open the session to, sorry, were you saying something, Maharaj? No. Okay. Uh, let's open this session to our kind devotees. Please feel free to unmute yourself and pose your question. I see already Shukakara Prabhu. Would you like to go ahead and ask yes. your question? Yes, Nina Mataji Hare Krishna Namaskar, Dandal Pranam. Krishna Jivas Kochi. Chandimali Prabhu, Dandal Pranam Maharaj. Your questions are always, uh, your class are so much filled with ecstasy and uh, the mercy of the Lord, because you are Shila Prabhupada's very dear disciple. Uh, would you know, in the current Yuga, the Kali Yuga, what we see is, diverse has already gone. Now the new thing is, live in relationship. And you know, people are just getting to do all wrong things. And uh, uh, the children are not uh, understanding that by living relationship, they're going to do so many diseases and you know, and bad karma reactions, and the ladies get stuck up. So what do you suggest as a guru, as a uh, person in the ISKCON, you're on the top level, how do you suggest that this can be changed? Because the Indian uh, government also has accepted it's a legal thing to go for living relationship. It was in yeah. Western world, but it's come. Yeah. So I need your uh, the answer, advice. The answer, yeah, the answer is education. We have to educate them these you know, Children go to school for secular education. The secular education at yeah, best gets you some position in the material world. But that's not real education. Real education is Brahma Vidya or understanding spiritual principles and learning how to execute them. So mm -hmm. as the priest in the ISKCON movement, it's our responsibility to, to make programs to reach out to the population and to invite them in various types of programs, which will include education. So I'm here in India, I'm in Pune right now. Mm -hmm. I just got here today. And in a couple of days, we will be uh, meeting with um, students who will be coming to hear about some of the um, topics that uh, they are faced with in the material world as students and at the same time they have an interest in moving towards spiritual life. So um, these programs have been undertaken with great efforts. That means going into the colleges and arranging for these programs to develop. So we need to do that everywhere. So the student class in the world are the class that will make a difference in the, in the future. They are the future of the world. So as devotees, we need to take on these programs of education in the, in the, in the universities, in the high schools, in, the, in various types of uh, uh, groups in society, offer these real education, spiritual education. Mm -hmm. Naraj, what I find another important point is uh, the parents are Krishna conscious, but many of my uh, colleagues, the children, they are not taking it serious. They know Krishna consciousness, they're done, but they are polluted by their friends and the colleagues. So they don't want to take it seriously. Maybe their own karmic reactions, I don't know what is what has happened. So do you suggest that every child uh, whose parents are Krishna conscious, they should send at least one year for the Gurukul to know the taste, what is the Brahmacharya life, so that they will know, or at least homeschool, something will give them, because the current education is totally useless. They're leading no. only about Akbar, Babar, 
and all these things. That's Umayun, no use. Nothing about Mahabharat Ramayana. And they're telling Krishna Ramayana's uh, mythology. What mythology? It's all the, the truthology. So education system has to be changed. And also the children should be definitely know something what is happening in the Mayapur and Vrindavan. So how do you suggest we should Rama, take it? Rama. Because the Prabhupada was very adamant to explain that all secular education leading one to become a, a big ass. Okay. And he also was quoting Bhakti Vinod Thakur, who says that, you know, modern education teaches one how to become a, a gigantic ass. Mm. To introduce uh, education based on uh, the soul. Mm. Who are and Prabhupada went to Massachusetts Institute of Technology in Boston many years ago. He said that, he said, he, after giving a lecture and the discussion, he says, where is your, where is your education in spiritual technology? Hmm. Technology, material things. But who are you? Do you know who you are? Do you know how you are different from this body you live in? Well, that education... Hmm. In secular schools, we're doing it within the uh, within the uh, in ISKCON and maybe a few other groups. But even in many religious groups around the world, they teach them a little bit about God and prayer and devotion to God, but they don't teach them. Who they are. They're not this body. <laughs> Sukadev Goswami really, really emphasized this point in the final instructions that he gave to Maharaj Purutu at the end of the world, just before Maharaj Purutu was about to meet his destiny. He explained very carefully the difference between the soul and the body. We, and of course, Krishna does that throughout the entire Bhagavad Gita, especially in the second chapter. Mm. We don't, we think we're this body. And we think everything based on the body is what we need to uh, achieve. Mm. First, we don't know who we are. We don't know who, what, what is our, what is our, our real activity in life, and what is our real goal in life. Mm. So education is needed. That's the job of our movement to educate in as many ways as we can. Well, I find the Christianity, they have biblical studies, the children also know. The, Dubai also, I was there, they got Quranic studies, every Friday they meet. But in the Sanatana Dharma, there's nothing. They are knowing, but when they go to the college, there's nothing. They don't go to the temple also. So there's a big, but I know the golden age is coming, Mahaprabhu has predicted. This will change, but current moment, Corona also has again come. So, you know, totally in a very distressed condition. But I know the holy name will save us, but the children are a little uh, disrupted. Before you can make progress in spiritual life, you have to know the difference between the body and the soul. Uh, that, that's why Krishna took that, that instruction as first. Before he taught Arjuna any other subject matter, he very carefully and very extensively made clear examples with explanations of the difference between the living being and the body that the living being has, between matter and spirit. And Prabhupada also said, this is the foundation. Before you can go to higher math or mathematics, you have to understand basic arithmetic. The basic thing is you are not this body. You are not Krishna's part of the well, We have a body, but we're not the body. Yes, Maharaj. I think we have to convince Modi ji to bring Bhagavad Gita in the school because Bhagavad Gita is not religion. It's beyond religion, beyond uh, everything. It is soul level, not body at all. So that has to be convinced and everybody should read Bhagavad Gita, whether they are Christians or Muslims or anybody. Bhagavad Gita is a must. This is for the soul to soul. But how to bring it, we are all trying to, how to make it understand that everybody should appreciate and accept. Worldwide, Krishna consciousness has become acceptable. But somehow, here the Islamic people, they are telling, no, 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 Bhagavad Gita. All Krishna is not there. They don't say Krishna, Brahma was there at all. These are all only stories. So somehow some big change, revolutionary changes to come at the education level. As you said, body, soul, different people don't know. So how they will understand about Bhagavad Gita? I think Bhagavad Gita has to be brought as a 
compulsory subject for everybody in the whole world. Yeah, and just like we have this one devotee, he's also from Pune. I was talking to him yesterday. And he's written, he's written books on Bhagavad Gita to, to extract some of the principles of Bhagavad Gita, which are uh, practical, moral, and religious principles that we can apply in our life. And he's done three or four books just on Bhagavad Gita, taking certain categories of Bhagavad Gita and making a book from those categories. Like if you want to know any kind of topic, you can find the topic in the verses. If you want to know, if you want to develop a particular type of quality, then he'll, he's put a book together to show you the verses where those different qualities exist. So, um, yeah, he was explaining yesterday, today, he's got three more books on Bhagavad Gita. So everything's in Gita, you're right. Krishna put everything there that we need in order to get to the point of surrender and devotion. I can see the business level, Gaur Gopal Prabhu, Radhanath Bhara, disciple, is going in a big way. And many business people in the social media, they're accepting. And he says, I am not a guru. I am just a monk, but I am also a normal human being. And they are accepting it, because he never talks about Krishna. He only talks about something negative, positive, but everybody is accepting. So we have such people like Gaur Gopal Prabhu, and you know, just to make it for the, all communities. Of course, our preachers, with all your blessings, Gaur Gopal Prabhu and... Gaur Gopal is one of the biggest preachers in all of India right now. Yeah. <laughs> He's doing top yeah. preaching. <laughs> big people with big, big positions, and they're coming. I mean, he's, yeah. he's really, really up there. He's even higher than his spiritual master. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I, I hope to see him in about a week or so. He's just written another book. Um, uh, yeah, he just does. He did a second book just he just completed it about a couple of days ago, and he. He's just put it out. I haven't seen it yet. But yeah, he's uh, he's he's showing that you can reach people on in Krishna consciousness from any area of lifestyle if you know how to if you know the principles of Gita and how to use those principles to explain how to solve the problems that people have in this material world. Ooh. But, but with your blessings, I'm sure there are good speakers coming up. I'm seeing Amarendra Prabhu, Amoglila Prabhu, Gauranga Prabhu, Radeshyam Prabhu. They're all coming in a big way. I'm sure Krishna's mercy will come and hit everybody. The whole world, Prabhupada will come again. It will become a big thing. My prayers and your blessings are required, Prabhuji. Maharaj. Subramaniya will be one of the main preachers of... <laughs> Sorry, I forgot to change my name. My name is Sukhakar Kachadas. I forgot to change it. I'm Sukhakar Kachadas, my servant. And I need your blessings, uh, Maharaj, because you are you are like Prabhupada now. You are representing Prabhupada for all of us. So when we meet you, we see Prabhupada through you. Well, you you're preaching to all of us right now. So you should continue with that, that mood of preaching and, and go around to as many groups as you can and tell them what Krishna really want you to do. <laughs> I think you, you, you have the power to convince people. Your blessings, man. Because Krishna preached just in few hours without preparation. Everything so fantastically. So how great Krishna is. Bhagavad Gita was spoken. <laughs> yeah, Krishna is truly great. Thank you, Sajjavani. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Maharaj. I need your blessings. Seek your blessings. Maharaj, one quick question. Tiffany Mataji had the question, and I myself too. Um, what was the name of the devotee, and what's the name of the book? I believe, Tiffany Mataji, you're asking about the Bhagavad Gita extract that was written. This is the, oh, well, yeah, this, um, his name is um, Chaitanya Charna. He's very popular throughout India. He also preaches in the West. And uh, he just gave me one of his books yesterday. Let me see. I'll go get it. (laughs) 
And so I'm going to show you the book. This is it's called Gita Wisdom Through Quotes. Gita Wisdom. Through Quotes. It's a white cover, a little hard to see. I don't know if you can see it. But right, you'll see the peacock feather, Gita Wisdom Through Quotes. And then if you just uh, and this like here it goes, I just opened the one. In bhakti, to talk is also to walk the talk. <laughs> I do. In bhakti, to talk is also to walk the talk. Super. That's, that's from chapter 18, verse 68. In, wrong about, in worrying about what all may go wrong, we go wrong. Chapter 18, verse 35. Spiritually empowers us, spirituality empowers us to reclaim our destiny, to do our best, bring out our best, and to attain our the best. From chapter okay. 12, verse 15. Between chapter 6, verse 35. Before you put others in their place, put yourself in their place. Super. That's really that. Before you put others in their place, put yourself in their place. The starting point of happiness is selflessness. Hey, boy. And so is the whole quote. There's like, um, you know, almost 350 pages in this book. The best translation of the Gita is its translation into life. So this is a little book he's done. This is one of many. Chaitanya Charnam, he has a website. You can look it up. Thank you. Thank you so much, Maharaj. I, I bet we all will benefit so much with this. Um, I, ha I see hands raised of Lalitangi Mataji. Would you like to go ahead and pose your question, Mata? Hare Krishna Maharaj, please uh, accept my humble obeisances. Sadhguru Sushila Prabhupada. Uh, wonderful class, Maharaj. And uh, uh, I, we are, I'm really thinking about what you said that when you went to high school, you, uh, there were none of your friends' parents who were who are diverse and this is exactly opposite now, whether it's uh, Indian origin or anywhere else, we find, uh, we hear more diverse news than, uh, than wedding news. So Maharaj, when, uh, two years back when you came to this forum, you, were, you gave us some very nice practical tips of how a husband and wife uh, should, um, like uh, should interact or uh, for example, if the wife wants to tell to the husband something wrong, uh, something he's doing wrong and the wife wants to say how she says it, depending on the psychology of the husband and the husband, how he says it to the wife. I was trying to recollect it. I forgot to take the notes, but now that, you know, you were bringing up this topic, can you guide us on that Maharaj? So that, you know, even though there may be disagreements, it doesn't lead to breakage of families. Well, if you argue, then nothing gets solved generally. But um, I was using, of course, the solution is Krishna consciousness. That's the solution. When a husband is Krishna conscious, the wife is Krishna conscious, they have disagreements, they can work it out. But let's use another uh, example. Uh, another the example I was talking is that. A wife, a, husband, a wife should understand very clearly the nature of her husband. If she wants to instruct her husband in something that she feels is beneficial for her husband and for maybe for the family, she has to do it in such a way as to not to tell him 
what to do, but to somehow or other make him aware that this is a situation. So that can be done using women with womenly charm, womenly intuition, womenly affection. All of that can be done to somehow or other communicate in a very sweet and loving way what needs to be understood. Because you'll find, and this is true with most men, I wouldn't say all of them, but most men, most men don't like to be told by their wives what to do. They, because that is the nature of the male ego. Simply because the wife is telling it, they immediately there is a block there. And if a husband keeps listening to the instructions of his wife, he becomes demasculated. He loses his masculinity and he, he's aware of that. And some men, of course, go down that route. So if the wife, many times the wife is correct about what she wants to communicate, but then how it does that is based on um, making that understanding without telling him directly what to do. So I can't go any further into that because that's up to the women. To, they, know, they know what I'm talking about. They do it all the time. <laughs> Thank you, Maharaj. I mean, that's, uh, as you said, that Krishna consciousness and that's the, the more Krishna conscious we are, the more the, it's a solution for problems uh, in all aspects. And also, yeah, not directly telling. So this is what something you, you told the other day also. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Maharaj, for your wonderful association. Hare Krishna. Maharaj, now it is happening, love at first sight, marriage at first sight, many cases. Say that again, I didn't hear it. Love at first sight, marriage at first fight. That was <laughs> at first fight, sorry. All right, we won't explore that any deeper. <laughs> I had seen a hand raised by Gordas Prabhuji. Sorry, we could not take your question. I don't know if you're here. You can go ahead. Otherwise, Tiffany Mataji, you can please go ahead with your question. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Is, is Gordas, did he leave? I think I don't see him here. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll go ahead. I just... um. I just want to say thank you so very much, Maharaj, for highlighting the point that spiritual education and training provides everything that we need in life, you know, and that it's so important if we have that spiritual and, and um, spiritual education and training in our youth, it provides everything that we need to go forward in life. Um, it's so important, even in the material world, because I often see, I just had this conversation with a group on Monday, a Bhagavad Gita group about um, how important it is to have that spiritual foundation just to, especially in, in the current in the current times, just to be, to make the right decisions in life and just to be a moral person. You know, it seems that so many people now are confused about basic things in life. And it's it's really kind of frightening to see that. So I'm so, thank you so much for making that point. I really appreciate it. It's something that I need to keep imbibing and, and keep remembering and, and hopefully um, will help me grow in my Krishna consciousness so that I can preach to others as well. So grateful for your association, Maharaj. It, 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 your class, just being in your presence, even though we're online, is always so helpful. Always reinforces Krishna consciousness. So thank you so very much. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Good, I'm happy to serve. Um, Gorodas said he 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 can't unmute himself. So if you unmute him, Nina, then he can he can speak. Oh, Prabhuji, would you like to go ahead and um, chat? Put your question in the chat. I can read it out. Uh, he's online. I saw his name there. He just said he can't unmute himself for some reason. Mataji has put his question in the chat. His question is there in the chat. Okay, let's see. Um, yes. Okay, yes, I do see. Thank you, Mataji, for saying. So Prabhuji saying, Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you for such a wonderful class, Maharaj. My question is that, how to deepen our relationship with Krishna. And please share some tips on how to deepen, deepen our chanting. Well, that's easy. There's hundreds of verses that tell you what to do. <laughs> and one, and the, the essence of all of the verses is to hear and chant the glories of the Lord in association with the devotees. Come together. Read Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita, discuss Krishna, discuss the philosophy, discuss Krishna's pastimes, especially, especially his pastimes in Vrindavan. The more you talk about Krishna, the more you hear about Krishna, the more you connect with Krishna, the more you connect with Krishna, because Krishna is all attractive. That attraction will turn into attachment, and that attachment will turn into devotion. You just, you just gotta, you just gotta be. Prabhupada said, to be Krishna consciousness, he gave the example. Um, I mean, there's these guys that who are drunkards, and they live in the Bowery, and they eat, they drink this cheap wine. It costs fifty cents for a bottle of wine. So when they beg fifty cents, they get a bottle, and then all they can think about is getting their next bottle when they finish. And they just keep going that way. So it, it's the problem. I said, this is a, we want Krishna every minute. That's it. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. So, okay, just keep. Uh, one supporting. more question is asked about the chanting. Maharaj, one more question. God has asked how to improve the intensity, intensity of chanting. So one more question. He has asked. Can. All right, I'll read something that I have on my uh, phone here. Let me see if I can find it. I think I can, I hope I can find it. Very instructive. And Prabhupada said, this is bhakti yoga, the simple practice. If you chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, tongue, your tongue is locked up and your hearing practice is locked up. That is samadhi. Immediately absorbed in thoughts of samadhi, samadhi of Krishna. Let me see here. I think I have it really good. Mm -hmm. Any person who is chanting the holy names of Krishna in course of time feels transcendental pleasure and very quickly becomes purified from all material contamination. Number two, simply by properly doing our job a daily, we can be free from the reactions to sinful activity. Three, we cannot become fully Krishna conscious without chanting good quality rounds daily. Chanting is the most powerful way to become Krishna conscious. Our strength is in following the registered principles and chanting 16 rounds of Japa. And so Prabhupada gives 10, these are 10 points. Of all the regular good principles, the spiritual master's orbit to channel these 16 rounds, 
is most essential. When Jap is not done with love and attention, there is often no observable spiritual or material result. However, the same japa done with love and attention will enable us to perform all other devotion practices in a pure manner, also with love and attention. Prabhupada writes, your japa beads are your ticket back to Godhead. Mm -hmm. Chant, chant, chant with attention, chant with devotion, practice chanting, keep going, don't give up. It'll get better and better if you work at it. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Uh, one quick question from Radhe Mataji. She's saying, um, if a person is married to one person, is a bit slow in Krishna consciousness, does the spouse have to get initiated along with the spouse? Or one spouse can go ahead and get initiated without waiting for the partner? Well, that depends on the circumstance. We, we would like and this is the standard that we try to follow is that both come together. But in some cases, it's not going to work. And it keeps that one person who is ready from moving forward. So um, that has to be judged by each circumstance. But ideally, we want them both to come together. Thank you, Maharaj, for clarifying that. We have one quick question from Jyoti Mataji. She's offering her respectful obeisances to you. And she says, when Shiksha Guru give a direction in material life, but material duties, problems are critically going against those directions and teachings, then what should we do? Hmm. Good clarification. You give me an instructions, and this is what's happening. So please uh, give me further instructions or clarify your instructions. And, yeah. Wonderful, Maharaj. She also has a quick question. Please guide us how to preach to children. She has a growing adolescent one. So how should she preach to him or her with some tips? Well, first be an example perfect example for what you want them to be. That's the first thing. Second, encourage them to take part in activities in devotional service. Like going to festivals, going to going to kirtans. And Maharaj, do you recommend any children's Ramayana or Mahabharata book? That's also Mataji's question. Yeah, there's these things are available. Mahabharata, I don't think there's a Mahabharata for children, but there's a Ramayan for children. Mm -hmm. Mahabharata. Bhakti Vikas Maharaj is written in Ramayan book. Bhakti Vikas Maharaj. It's all in this. Yeah, he, did a, he did a Ramayan. Kind of a short version. There's Bhagavatam for children. Very extensive. Narayani Dasi did one. Mm. The Bhagavad Gita. So many. Just look up children's books. You can also go to uh, Mother Irmala. She's done a lot of books for children. Amala. What is the name of Magalak? Irmala. Yeah. Urmila. Urmila, okay. Yeah, there's a lot. I'm gonna, I forgot. There's a there's a few other ladies who concentrate that in their service. I can't think of their name, but the books are available. There are several comments from several devotees. Sorry, was somebody about to ask a question?
He says Madango Pulse's Mahabar comic book series for his two issues. Oh, it's pretty good. There you go. 42 comic books on the Mahabharata. Great. Thank you so much for sharing that, Madan Prabhuji. Appreciate it. Yeah, kids like comics. So Gordas Prabhuji is uh, definitely very grateful with your wonderful answer. Valli Mataji is saying, thanks for Lalitangi Mataji's question and remembering the class two years prior and making us all hear the tips for better relationships. So thank you I, very much. I, like, I would like to say something. And don't get don't get me wrong, but I, I don't really like to get thanked at all while I'm doing these classes <laughs> because it interferes with the philosophy. We want to discuss philosophy. I'm not here to get thank you all the time. <laughs> you want to thank me? You can do that in your mind. But it's it's not something that we should be doing all every minute. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. We do this as a service, and the service is not something that we we want to get something from. We enjoy doing the service. So to get, I mean, I don't want to sound ungrateful, but at the same time, to get thanked is kind of like breaks the whole mood of, of what we're trying to do. We're trying to discuss philosophy. We'll, we'll, we'll even disagree with each other. We'll even tell each other that you're off. <laughs> so philosophy, you have to get into it, man. It's not about, you know, giving presents to each other based on nice answers. <laughs> it's about learning. So we can appreciate that. Um, and so getting thanks every minute just puts me to sleep, you know. <laughs> Yes, Maharaj. Very true. And also it's uh, taking too much time because everybody says the same thing over and over again. Yeah. It's happening every day in the class. When it's, you know, everybody just thanks the speaker so many times. And like, you know, so many devotees are there on the call. So everybody says the same thing and it takes too much time. So better yeah, one person it. just says and that's it. That would be nice. The greatest thank you is just to learn from, from the discussion. Yes. Yes, we need to follow the instructions and the, you know, keep it in our behavior like that. Yeah. All the moderators, no more thanking to our wonderful, wonderful <laughs> Maharaj. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maharaj, I had one question like um, Narad Muni was preaching to the um, all the boys, they became brahmacharis. So um, Daksha Prajapati gave birth to girls. So he cannot preach. But nowadays, uh, what is happening? Ladies are more advanced in Krishna consciousness than the, you know, Prabhus. Yeah. So, yeah, because the, the age of Kali, men are becoming more, less and less inclined to spiritual life and women are becoming more because um, men are still uh, more or less interested in getting some kind of uh, financial... In other words, they spend a lot of their time away from Krishna consciousness and other activities. Women generally have also have more time, generally, not always. And therefore they take it in. So practically in all my classes, you'll see there's always an, an outpouring of women that is greater than men. It's, you'll see it happening all around the world. It's just a feature of this age. Mm -hmm. now, it's good that the women are coming forward and taking more opportunities. Mm -hmm. That's good, but the fact that the men are dropping off, that's not good.
You are in India, Maharaj, right now in Pune. I'm in, I'm in Pune. Yeah. Yeah. Just got here today. I was in Nasik a few days before. Yes, Maharaj. Very nice devotees in Nasik. They give classes for Bhakti Sangha. Yeah, unfortunately, he wasn't there when I was there. He was in Vrindavan. But... Oh. Krishna Dana Prabhu was there. Krishna Dana. Yes. Yeah, he's good. Wonderful devotee. Okay, um, we got Jyoti. We got a quiet question up there. Uh, yes, Guru Maharaj Ji, I have a question. Uh, when, um, when it is a silly question, but it's a question. When, uh, when Lord ordered uh, Prajapati to uh, for the progeny, means uh, there was the need to increase the population, right? So there are. It's not only about the living beings, like the uh, human beings. It was also about the other species. So whatever species we see in the earth, in the womb, right from the small, minute particles, like from the cell. So everything has inconceivable soul. So uh, how that was, means that is the power of Lord, right? So how he could, you know, um, means how that duplication happened because the pop, uh, the um, the order was for just a human population but what about the other species how that has happened means uh, there is a huge lot of species like 84 lakhs so uh, what about that well that, that's that's mentioned that all of, all of the species are created simultaneously not like the human species came first Oh, the other species came first, and then they evolved into a human species. No, they all, all uh, Lord Brahma, getting his information from Lord Krishna, uh, produced the body of the 8,400,000 species. And according to the karma of the different souls, they enter into different bodies at the time of the next creation. So, as long as there's a material world, there's 8,400,000 species of life. And they all manifest simultaneously at the beginning of the, at the beginning of the new creation. Yes, Guru Maharaj, it means it happened simultaneously, right? It means one after the another. Yeah, simultaneously. It's not like one species produces another species. That, that's the bogus Darwin theory. Uh, no, they're all produced simultaneously. Guru Maharaj Ji, can I ask you, where are you in Pune? Because I'm in Sholapur. Can I take your darshan? I'm at the temple. At the Sri uh, Sri Radha Vindavan Sandra. Temple Pune has two temples. You see Radha Vindavan Chandra and Radha Kunjabi Hariji. The Kunjabi Hariji temple is in the first temple. This is the second temple. This one is like a complex. It's quite diverse. Um, I go to uh, on, on the 24th. I go to Radha Kunja Bihari Temple for Bhagavatam class between 8 and 9 o'clock in the morning. So if you want to come there, that's right next to the, uh, what is it called? The ladies, uh, ladies Club? You know the Ladies Club in Pune? It's, in, it's nearby yeah. station. You're on Katraj, right? They say camp. Ladies Camp, camp. Yeah. Yeah. We're right across the street from the ladies' camp. It's yeah. the most popular things in Pune. And that's uh, on the 24th, I give class, which is Saturday. 
Yeah. Or tomorrow I give class here, Radhavindavan Chandra's temple. I'm not sure. This temple is outside of the immediate city area of Pune, on the outskirts. I'm not sure of the location. But anyone, everyone knows you just asked for Radhavindavan Chandra Mandir. The big temple mount. It's a complex, yes. Yeah, yes, it's very big. It also, also has a Balaji temple here too. Yeah. Very beautiful place. Yeah. Okay, so we must... Maharaj, is Radhesham Prabhu is in this temple only? Where you are going? The same temple, Radhesham Prabhu? He's here. He's, here. he's here with he's in this temple. Yeah. Hare Krishna. Maharaj, one See, quick question. I'll come on Saturday, Guru Maharaj Ji. Hopefully, please uh, accept my respectful obeisances. That's what I want to say. I'll try to come on Saturday for sure. Okay. Sunday and you can come on Sunday too at Radha Vindavan Chandra's temple. Yay. Okay, Guru Maharaj Ji. I'm so mm, happy uh, um, to see you. Hare Krishna. That was that's a different program. You can go on both the days, Saturday here and Sunday there, both the days. Jyoti Mataji. Ji yeah. Prabhu Ji. Hare Class Krishna. Double bent. <laughs> One day we'll get Radgulla, second day Gulab Damun. <laughs> Maharaj, one interesting question from Rish Bhanvi Mataji. She's asking, Maharaj, why is our scripture called mythology? By any chance, any, any idea? It's not mythology. That's somebody's wrong interpretation. <laughs> no. It's factual. Jaster is is not that is not mythology. The Shastras put it put together by the great the, the great souls, the great acharyas. They have, no business, they have do no business making cartoons or mythology. <laughs> There's no such thing. Mythology is the wrong label. It's, it's somebody's somebody's imagination. Let us down. <laughs> People, you know, if two ants are together, you know, making their little anthill, and one ant says to another ant, hmm. you know, there's something up there that's bigger than us. And the other one, the other ant says to him, nah, nah, you just you took too much sugar and you're a little intoxicated. <laughs> we're the best, you know. <laughs> so we're like ants. And we're thinking, well, there's nothing outside of us, you know. But we we live on a very low level of existence. There are beings, higher beings, much higher than us, all the way up, even in the material world, we're just thinking about the spiritual world. So people have no knowledge, therefore they speculate. Maharaj is mostly a very British influence that we have, BBC influence, mm. always terming, getting what our history is, that everything is mythology. It's a pity. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, well, you know, this is Kali Yuga. Kali Yuga means what is religion looks like your religion, and what is your religion goes on as religion. Morality is defined by uh, whatever you want to do, that's that's considered to be morality. Mm -hmm. Just read Srimad Bhagavatam in the age of Kali. All of the deficiencies that come up in this age. It's all there, but Bhagavatam is prophecy. It's telling you it's something that came thousands of years ago and it's telling us what's happening now. We don't read Bhagavatam, therefore we remain in illusion. Maharaj, Mahaprabhu will save us, no surely. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu won't leave us, he'll save us. 
Yeah, he's saving us for sure. <laughs> yeah. Just catch 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 his lifeline. Chan Chan Hare Krishna Sarvaishna and then you'll be saved. Yeah. Okay, so thank you. I don't know. I know you're probably running late. There was one quick question, interesting one, where Prabhuji is asking, nowadays the world preaches for equality between men and women. What is the Veda's outlook on that? If you could uh, really say something on the Kali Yuga. Say that. What's the question again? So the question is, nowadays the world preaches for equality between men and women. What is the Veda's outlook on that? I mean, what would Veda consider that and how should we interpret it in the Kali Yoga, if you could kindly share yeah, something? We should all be equal. First, the women can have the first child and then the men can get pregnant and have the second child. <laughs> and the women can have the third and they can take turns, you know, being pregnant. Very good. Then we have equality. Don't you understand there's a difference? <laughs> so it's not about equality means on the spiritual platform. Materially, people, things and people are different. So you can't make equality on the material platform. It's not possible because it's, something is better, something is worse, something is different, something is it's not possible. So you have to accept the things accordingly and come to the spiritual platform and then you find equality. And that the devotion of a, a woman and the devotion of a man is equal because both are devoted. So there is equality, but don't look for it on the material platform. You won't find it. If you try to artificially create it, you'll, you'll see you can't do it. It's not possible. But it doesn't mean one is better than the other. It means it's just there's differences. But if equality means doing the same thing, then that's not the definition of equality. Yeah. Everyone should have the right to worship the Lord. Everyone should have the right to get everything they need in order to live nicely and happy in this world. That's equality. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaj, for your association time. I think we should uh, end the class now. Let's pay our obeisances to Maharaj. Vancha Kalpata Rubyashya.